Richmond bottle a big lead to lose to the Swans at the SCG. The Gold Coast Suns were shining at night in Darwin against the hapless Hawks. And the Dockers are gonna win the flag. This, this is, is the Drew Footy Show. Hey, long road, took a tumble down this black hole. Stuck in Sunday League, but I'm on levels with Ronaldo. Hello, 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 you plonkers, and welcome back to another episode of the Drew Footy Show. Another week, another Jesse failure. He hasn't showed up again, probably because his football side doesn't win games anymore. But yet again, we've got an upgrade in terms of content and looks. We've got Anthony, the pair. Anthony, what's going on, my friend? How are we? Hello, Drewzy. It's good to be on uh, the Drew Footy Show. I think um, Jesse's obviously a bit like John Cena. You just can't see him at the moment, so that's all good. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm honoured to be on him again. It's, uh, it's nice to be on the show, and I'm looking forward to uh, a big app ahead. Who needs John Cena when you've got the great Carly? is all I have to say. <laughs> but um, if you want to contribute to the Drew Footy Show, head over to the Drew Footy underscore Instagram account. That's where we get the topics and questions for the show. I'm trying to hit 7.5K by the end of June as well. So make sure you hit that subscribe button. It's absolutely free if you haven't done it already. Like the video to support the channel. Let's get into it. This week for Bloke of the Week, usually we go for a bit of a, a joke, Bloke. But this week, I saw something admirable, Anthony. And I'm giving Bloke of the Week this week to Bobby Hill yeah. for playing a game of football after being diagnosed with testicular cancer. He wanted to go out and play one more game before he has to go through all the treatment and everything that comes with that terrible disease. We've seen players fight back from it. Doherty from Carlton and Jesse Hogan as well. So, you know, he, hopefully we, we have our fingers crossed and the football world prayers are with him at the moment um but yeah bobby here what a bloke anthony yeah i know like we can't say uh anything highly enough that represents um what bobby hill's done there's been a few players over the time as you mentioned doherty robbie gray through an off season as well um mm -hmm. but i think just it's, it's an exceptional thing to go through um uh, and i don't mean that in a, like a exceptional it's in good it's exceptional that yeah. is in, he's in tough um to endure this and put his head towards footy and continue to play like it's full credit to him and I think he's more than a bloke of the week I think he's one of the blokes of the year to uh, to be nominated yeah. so Bobby Hill, well done Bobby you are the bloke of the week give him a clap <laughs> <laughs> into our winners and losers of the week Anthony and I'm going to give my winners this week to the Fremantle Dockers who had the biggest win I've seen since the 2013 preliminary final against the Sydney Swans Anthony, your team's been good for a few years and we were talking before off-air about how Port Adelaide beat Hawthorne in 2014 and that sort of kick-started really your last three years and how you wanted to play. This game, as I said, the best football I've seen the Dockers play since 2013, but that third quarter in particular was the best football I've ever seen this club play. We dominated Melbourne out of the oh. middle, Anthony. No club has been able to do that. Christian Petrarca might have been sick, but Dockers were down with the sickness. Will Brody, Caleb Strong, Andy Brayshaw, absolutely dominating. Sean Digswag, Darty, Onions, just he took, he held his own against the best ruckman that possibly the game has ever seen, depending on how highly you rate Max Gorn. And our pressure around the ball was finals like. Melbourne couldn't deal with the heat that we were pouring into the kitchen, and we stormed home. I think we kicked, I think Melbourne kicked one goal in the second half, and that was it. And I thought at halftime the game was done after being four goals down to the Ds. No side has beaten the Ds in the last 17 games. And the Dockers got it done. Massive response after the last two weeks, losing to uh, Gold Coast and Collingwood. So the season's back on. And we've got a question here from Footy Aesthetics. And he wants to know, is it time for flag mantle? And I'm not getting ahead of myself after the last two weeks. Because after we beat North Melbourne, I thought we were the best football side to ever exist, Anthony. Um, but that was a massive scout. We've beaten Geelong in Geelong. We've beaten uh, the D's, the Premiers, on their home deck. We've got Brisbane this week, and I like our chances against Brisbane if we can bring our best footy. How high are you on my football side at the moment, Anthony? What do you think of my boys? Look, I've been high on them all year, and I've been really happy to see their progression from a 10th place uh, settler for the last 50,000 years compared to... <laughs> um, you know, what they've produced this year, yeah, they had a couple of games where they lost to Collingwood, but we've seen Collingwood have been a pretty, I don't know what the word is, pokey, pokey side this year where they yeah. like to take advantage of the teams at the top and and uh, produce some good footy. And then Gold Coast, I think, have, haven't got as much credit as they should have this year. So both okay. games in the wet, um, and yeah, you could say a little bit of a slump, but Frio's 
map was there, the game plan was there, they didn't convert in those games, and then you see that they had what they did in that second half on the weekend, and they converted, they took their opportunities, they took half opportunities, which was something you got to do against the D's, and it was just, look, I, I like the D's, but it was just nice to see them crumble a little bit. It showed they were human. Yeah, it was. It's a bit like... It was nice to see them lose, finally. Yeah, it's a bit like the Terminator getting shot, but getting back up. But instead, the Terminator <laughs> actually got shot up. and got down. Like, it, it, it didn't get back up. So, the Ds are a very, very good outfit. We know that. They're a premiership side. They're still a favourite. Um, but beating the Ds at the G gives you so much more credentials uh, in the outside media. But on the inside, internally, I could not imagine how much buzz would be around, especially the young group. Like, the three have so much young talent. Imagine what they're feeling. Imagine the buzz they've got at the moment. They've just beaten the Ds at the G yeah. in round 11. And they're sitting in the top four. Alarm bells are ringing for the good reasons. The belief is definitely there now. And after the last two weeks where Longmuir come out in a press conference and said we've been getting ahead of ourselves, for us to just get back to what we've been doing the previous six weeks and not having to sort of slowly build up that momentum again, we're straight back on the horse. The flag mantle bag- bandwagon is back rolling again. But that's enough about the Dockers. Um, I'm going to move on to my losers of the week, Anthony, and I'm going to give it to Richmond, who have been pretty competitive this year, and they're definitely pushing for a top eight spot. Probably the last season that they'll ever compete for a flag, in my opinion, given that Darcy's looking like he's going to leave. Jack Rewell obviously aging, and that sort of uh, defensive spine that they've had in the last few years, they seem to just miss a lot of weeks at the moment as well. They haven't been able to have a good run with injuries, Richmond, but they were looking really good in that first half at uh, the SCG on Friday night. It was looking like Sydney were going to bottle another Friday night game in that second quarter because Richmond got out to a five-goal lead at one point, and they ended up bottling it. Now, full credit to Sydney, who just chipped their way back into this game. They come out firing in that third quarter. Buddy kicked six or five, maybe five for the game, um, playing on Gibkus, which was, he gave him a football lesson. And, you know, it's games like those where you play against the greats that you learn so much. Even though he had so many kicked on him, he's going to be a better player for it, Gibkus. But um, another big talking point out of this game, Anthony, was the non-paid free kick at the end of the game. Six points down, the Tigers were. Dion Prestia gets paid a free kick. And Chad Warner kicks the ball across the Sydney Harbour Bridge. Now, by letter of the law, if you kick the ball away after a free kick, it's 50, black and white. But umpires applied common sense for the first time in my 20 years of watching football. Uh, Legend Ace 2K22 wants to know, was it the right call for the umpire to not pay the free kick after the siren? And just give us your thoughts on the game in general. Um, well, looking at the uh, the 50 metre, I was one of the controversial ones that actually said it should be 50. Um, I agree. The consistency of umpires has been so out of whack that I think overall you really do want um, that to be paid for that basis. And I understand the siren, I understand the end of the game, the emotion. You've just won a close game of footy after coming back after 30 points down. Richmond probably shouldn't be in that situation anyway. But the fact is, you don't bomb a ball into the crowd. We've seen similar things during a game where if you even the slightest of the footy going outside for a boundary throw-in or out in the full, and you're punching it into the crowd, that's yeah. paid free kick against for time-wasting. And people mm-hmm. were using, exactly. like saying at the end of the game is okay because the time stopped. Well, it hasn't. He's still got to take a set shot. Yeah. You know, he's still got an opportunity to, yeah. to kick a goal. So you're just wasting time and delaying the game, which was going to be an in- inevitable... No, he's not going to kick. Pressy's not kicking a goal. The bloke can't kick 30 metres anyway. And he's 80 metres out. <laughs> so, well, you're not going to have a result from that. But kicking out the ball away into the crowd, delaying his kick, knowing it's a free kick. He might have not known, but it's still a free kick. Mm. You're still delaying time. Yeah, and I agree. For me, it like, stands out. Like you were saying about that consistency, Anthony, like the umpiring we have had to adapt to. We, we just did a video on Anthony's channel, by the way, which should be out about the current state of AFL umpiring. So definitely go check that out. But with the trajectory that umpiring is currently going, how letter of the law it is, we've become so accustomed to that, to expect these dicky free kicks that make no sense to be paid. So I think that's where the sort of controversy around this uh, this game 
has come from. Let's move on to your winners of the week, Anthony. Who have you got? Well, there's been a couple of big winners. You know, most notably Port Adelaide, you know, beating a, a an Essendon team who's unreal. <laughs> uh, Collingwood beating Carlton, get an honourable mention. But I'm going the Gold Coast Suns. What Stewie Dew's done this year with no star power in Ben King, he's had Levi Casbolt mm-hmm. and Mabai Chol stand up as tall forwards. It's been incredible to see the way he's able to adapt to any situation in a game. He's beaten Frio. He's been able to beat Carlton. They beat a Swans outfit at the SCG. Now you're knocking off Hawthorne by 10 goals. The credentials are there, and they have a very, very good draw running home. And I'm loving some of the, the some of their players. Um, and, and I mentioned Casbah. I mentioned Chol. Ainsworth is incredible up forward. You know, I think Rao starting to find his feet again. Um, obviously, Took Miller's just one of the best in the business. Ballard, like there's so many of their players that you like to love, and there's a bit of a culture there now. Yeah. And I'm, you know, mm-hmm. it's. Excuse the pun, but it's they're really starting to shine up there on the Gold Coast. So <laughs> hopefully, hopefully, if they don't make finals, they're going to be a top ten side. Um, I think they're going to yeah, really push I agree. I, a few teams. I think this is the best Gold Coast side we've ever seen. Like they are actually competing every week, and that's all you can ask a developing side to do. Like watching Frio over the last few years, you know that at their best. At minimum, they can compete most weeks. And then we'd have weeks off where we'd just get pumped and people would think we're, we're crap. Even though, like, as a Frio fan, you see the potential there. But every time I watch Gold Coast, they are there to compete every single week. And those are the foundations that will make you a good football team. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's what you want to do, isn't it? Like, you just want to see your team compete. Exactly. Who are you going to give your losers of the week to, Anthony? Let me know. Da-da-da-da-da. Da-da-da-da-da. Carlton. <laughs> I, I don't have any sympathy for the Blues because they've been so up in their in their little cloud this year. I'm happy for them to be doing well, but um, yeah, when you lose to Collingwood, who are uh, you know you, you've just claimed a big win against Sydney, you've claimed a big win the week before as well against GWS. They celebrated that game like um, like they won the flag, <laughs> but. Yeah, Carlton have credentials as well. I'm not de- denying that, and I'm happy to see what they're doing. But you know, you've got to win those games, and every time you see Carlton lose, it's just like, oh, or maybe, just maybe, this is the fall. But you know, they're sitting comfortably. I don't think they're too much of a loss. I don't think there's been too many losers this week. Um, I mean, yeah. it's good to see Adelaide losing, but you know, that's just my personal taste. <laughs> um, I think. One of the biggest shifts in this game was Jacob Wiedering going down, just because he's such a big pillar down back. And as soon as you sort of gain the ball from a defensive entry, Jacob Wiedering's always the one taking that intercept mark and getting the ball moving. So I think it took them a bit of a while uh, to settle in that game. But I've rated Collingwood all year long. They could borderline be winners of the week, in my opinion, because they're giving teams a tough task to play against them every single week. Craig McRae's done a great job there this season. And they just, um, yeah, they're just playing real good footy at the moment. They should be a finals side this year. I think their finals quality, um, and they just did enough to hold on in the end. Colton had a bit of a bit of a, you know, a sniff in the end of that game, but they couldn't get it done. And you're just giving them losers of the week just because you want to take them down a peg. And I'm all for it, Anthony. I think that's a great call. <laughs> oh, I love seeing humble teams do well, and at the moment, Carlton were not being humble. So maybe this is the reset <laughs> they need. I'm just it's. You might be losers, but being a loser is still a positive thing. It means you've got things to learn. It means you've got things you can improve. That's facts. Honestly, that positive facts. attitude. The Dockers, yeah, the Dockers in the last two weeks definitely got humbled and we've just come back and had the biggest win well, in the last decade. That's the thing. Port were 0-5. We did so much learning and now look at us. We're 5-6. and six. Things are turning. Yeah. So, yep, that's it. Learn your lessons. Exactly. As Kendrick Lamar once said, be humble. Stand up. No, sit down. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, buckle up, buckle up for the quick fire steamroll. Anthony, you have 30 seconds to answer as many short, sharp questions as you can. The record is currently set by Jesse at eight. This is a trivia type segment. So are you ready to rock and roll and win a million dollars? I am ready because, uh, as we know, the uh, segments you used to do that uh, know your team, I dominated. 
10 out of 10. So uh, I've got You're credentials. You're a fan of the, the pub quizzes. Oh, I love the pub right. quiz. I also love the pub, but that's a different story. Three, two. Do you think Freo are contenders? Yes. A Gold Coaster top eight sniff. Port Adelaide. <laughs> Is Justin Lomia one of the best game day coaches? Uh, no. Are Fremantle the best competitor to Melbourne for the flag? Yes. Were the Jack Darling jeers justified? Yes. Who is worse, North Melbourne or Wet Toast? Oh, North Melbourne. Who in the top eight is most vulnerable to miss finals? Uh, Western Bulldogs at the moment. I'll give you that. That could have broken the record. I'm going to count these up. Let's see how we went, Anthony. I think you got quite a few in there. So, Anthony, you got seven. You fell just short. But Damn. I think you did a good effort because I thought you did very well then. I was very so, good. Um, good job. What was that Port Adelaide response that you gave me? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I think I think was I said it? Port Adelaide uh, when you said Gold Coast Top A7. I've just replaced it and gone Port Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> I had to throw one. That's a good, that's a good way yeah. to do it. Just answer the questions <laughs> wrong and get through as many as you can. Port Adelaide, Travis Boak, 2004, Ken Hinckley sacked. <laughs> I wanted to throw it in there. Other games include Mr. Pearman. Let's go to the Gabba, which was the Saturday, first game of Saturday. Brisbane versus GWS. Brisbane had a very slow start. GWS were up by five goals at the start of this game, but Brisbane fought back. They know their game plan. They know how to win games. But if I'm a Brisbane fan at the moment, I'm not too happy because last week they had Hawthorne score 118 on them. This week, the Giants scored 96 on them. There's definitely holes in this line side, I reckon, particularly down back. What do you reckon about the Lions, Anthony? They're not as convincing as they were a few weeks ago, I think. Um, but if you know, they could, it, it's it's interesting because the way they lost to Hawthorne was very un Brisbane like, mm. uh, and and again on the weekend a slow start. I think there there might be a few uh, a few jitters in their in their game plan at the moment. That slow starts can be costly, um, but hey. They're Brisbane. They're at the Gabba. I, I, I think they'll come good. They just need a buy. They need a bit of a reset. And once they do, I think we'll still see them come good. Yeah, I just honestly think they need to figure out their defensive plan. And then they're the hardest team in the site, uh, hardest team in the comp to play against, pretty much, because they score over a hundred every week. Um, yeah. Geelong versus Adelaide at GMHBA. Not going to talk about this game, but I will allow you this opportunity to laugh at Adelaide. More competitive than I thought. Darcy Vogarty's gone, and uh, Geelong at home. Yeah, there you go. West Coast versus the Bulldogs. <laughs> I didn't even know this game happened, to be honest. I don't That's think any West Coast fans did either, because there was that many empty seats that they were giving away tickets for free. And I'm not even kidding. West Coast were giving tickets away for free. That is nuts. That's sure just where they are. The dogs. The dogs. The dogs were probably doing the same. Maybe, but like that's not even the Fox Con. Footy commentary wanted to be there. One hundred one point loss at home. We love to see it. We absolutely love to see that. Um, I honestly didn't watch this game. I was too busy celebrating the Dockers' win. Um, again, another clash of the Titans. Saint Kilda absolutely flogging the Roos by fifty three points at Marvel. The best thing I saw in this game was Wanganeen Malira run down the wing like a road runner. And we were talking in that uh, rules AFL umpire video that we did. I want to get rid of the bounce just so I can see Wanganeen Miller run freely every single week because that was a thing of beauty. But um, Max King just keeps kicking goals up forward and obviously St. Kilda, we're going to win this game. Do you have anything to add? Again, didn't know this game happened, but... Uh... <laughs> I got to watch him a couple times last year at the State Academy because uh, WA played South Australia twice and he was just a clear standout. He's, He's just going to be a star. That just lanky runner build. He's going to be great. Yeah. Now we'll give you some time to talk about Port Adelaide, Anthony. Your boys had a bit of a weird win against Essendon. 16 points. Was it wet conditions? What was going on there? Uh, Taylor, two halves, Drews. I think overall our first half was very impressive. The way we transitioned, um, the way we moved the ball was very sensational to watch and be there. Uh, the second half, well, yeah, it rained. Uh, Essendon... <laughs> sort of even the game up a little bit. The one thing I liked from Port was desperation. Uh, we haven't shown a lot mm -hmm. of that, and the way we were attacking the footy, we didn't put it on the scoreboard, but um, our desperation, especially at the contest, was a lot better. And I'll tell you what, it was good to have Big Dick back, Big Charlie Dixon. Um, <laughs> those big paddle pop hands were just sensational to see. <laughs> so uh, he's looking fit, he's looking lean, and I'm expecting a big second half of the year for him. And 
Hopefully the buyers come at a good time for Port. I think you guys have actually, like I was saying it before, you guys have just found a way to win again. You're just on the brink of the eight at this point. And if you can bring that same footy that you've bring, been bringing for the last four years again, maybe tinker with it a little bit. There's no reason that you guys can't make a push into the eight and even a finals push with the quality you guys have on your list. I spoke about it on nine things we learned this week. Like with Dixon back into the side, you've got Finlayson and Marshall. Those are three genuine, like, those are going to play in every side in the comp and you've got them in the same team. Yeah. Great keys. And then you've pushed Boak forward. Motlop just does what he does. You could probably do with a better sort of small forward in there, but Power Pepper pops up for goals just about every week as well. So I reckon on paper, you guys have one of the best forward lines in the comp. It's just about sort of making it click, as you said, in that transition from back to front and that mid to forward connection. As you were saying before, you were happy to see your boys compete, and that's all you can ask. After that Owen zip, uh, zip and five start to the season, it's just good to see that your boys are just playing hard because that's all you can really ask for. If the game plan doesn't work, that's on the coaches yeah. or the players' ability to understand what the coaches are trying to convey to them. But your players have to show up and compete and be physical every single week and play for the play for the badge. So it's good to see that Port are back doing that. Yeah, it is. And um, it's either we're making a tilt again for the top eight or we're just delaying Ken Hinckley's sacking. So either way, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to watch. Now into the tips, Anthony, and if you didn't know, my tipping this year has been horrible. I'm sitting on 61 total tips, 87th out of 113 in my own competition, but I did climb this week by five places, got seven out of nine correct tips, only getting Melbourne and Carlton wrong. At the top of the Druzy tipping comp, we have Yedison Peterson 2 on 75 total tips, but let's get into our tips for round 12. On Friday night, we've got the Bulldogs versus the Meow Meow Caddy Kits. And I'm going to tip... Oh, it's a 50-50 one. I don't know who I'm going to tip. I was trying to buy time. Who do you reckon? The Cats. Yeah? Cats come. I reckon the Bulldogs could have a massive statement win here. If they At do, Marvel. then I reckon that's your top eight. All right, I'm going to tip the Bulldogs because I need to get some riskies in. And I reckon... I just don't think Geelong play Marvel that well. So I'm going to I'm gonna go the Dogs to get it done by 18 points. Adelaide Oval hosts our two rivals on Saturday, Adelaide and West Coast. Jesus Christ, I wouldn't want to be at that game. Um, I'm going to tip your boys, the Crows. My boys, the Crows. I'm going to tip tip that whoever watches that game will go out afterwards because they don't want to re-witness that ever again. (laughs) <laughs> they never want to watch football again. <laughs> um, I'm going to tip an upset. I reckon the West Coast Eagles get a win. <laughs> oh, gross. Gold Coast are playing North Melbourne. Ooh. Here we go. Gold Coast are on the up here. They get a win. Oh, they get a win. But again, what kind of game is this? Who <laughs> in the fixture at the AFL wanted to schedule this? You've we gone... obviously need to start getting a promotion relegation system in. Seriously, like you've gone the dogs and cats on a Friday night. West Coast Adelaide... Only the 80-year-olds from the Crows are watching it. Gold Coast North <laughs> Melbourne. Is this game played at Metricon, Drews? No, it's at TIO. I think they're playing in Darwin again. So you're telling me the first three games of this round, you're going to have a combined crowd of 10,000 people. <laughs> anyway, Gold Coast win by 10 goals. We're in the bye. Um, MCG, I'm going to this game. Second time ever going to the MCG. It's going to be crazy. Cannot wait for this. Melbourne versus Sydney. Would love to see Sydney get up here just, you know, to solidify Freo's spot in the top four. But I think the Ds are going to bounce back and win. Ds at home. Sydney to run close. And this game will actually have people watching it. So, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I think the, D, the Ds will bounce back. Sydney are in good touch. But you'll need a few things to go your way to win there, I think. Hawthorne versus Collingwood at the MCG. Again, Hawthorne are the most bipolar side in the AFL at the moment. <laughs> they lost last week. The week before, they beat the Lions. They're back at the MCG facing an informed Collingwood. This is a tough one to pick. This is a very interesting game because if the Pies win, they're pretty much, I reckon, the front runner to finish eight, only because they've got a pretty good draw. That's why I think Hawthorne will probably win it because Hawthorne, <laughs> are, as you said, bipolar. They seem to bounce back well after losses. I'll go the Hawks by a couple of goals. Yeah, that's a good call. I'm going to chuck in the Pies, I reckon. I just think they'll find a way to get it done. 
And then Optus Stadium, Sunday afternoon, usually this fixture would be played against someone like, I don't know, Gold Coast or GWS or Hawthorne. This week it's against the Lions and it's a top four clash, third versus second. It's a massive game. I'm gutted I'm not going to be there. I'm going to be watching George Cambos has knocked Devin Haney's head off at Marvel Stadium instead. I'm going to tip the Dockers though. After that win last week, I can't tip against my boys. If they bring that uh, same ferocity that they brought to Melbourne... There's no reason they can't win that game. And with the amount of score that Brisbane concede every week, I think we can get it, run a score up and then limit theirs. So I'm going to tip the Dockers to win, Anthony. Yeah, I agree. I think um, you're probably getting Brisbane at a good time. I just hope you don't get... I hope the Freo Dockers don't get a the, the big win hangover that you seem to see yeah. so many teams do. Uh, and we saw Hawthorne do it just last week. Mm-hmm. But the Dockers, Frederick to kick five. Hell yeah, I like the sounds of that. It was yeah. a bit rough on Hawthorne though. I probably should have said this earlier in the video. They played in Tasmania the week before and then had to go to Darwin. It's like a completely different climate shift. So you're talking about um, bipolar. Like having to adjust to that would have been tough. Dockers, please learn your lesson. Don't get ahead of yourselves. And let's get another win on the board. Flag Actually mantle. hop the line soon. Flag mantle is on. Anthony said it here. You heard it here first on the Drew Footy Show. And that's going to wrap up the Drew Footy Show. So thank you very much for watching. And thank you to my beautiful friend, Anthony, for coming and giving me his time. Anthony, we did a video on your channel, AFL umpiring related. Anything else you want to plug? Let's plug. We, we know the pair. We know the latest video we've put out. But pairs on a pod. The latest podcast we've been doing, the mate, mate of mine, Jack Hudson, interviewing ex-Port Adelaide players. A lot of good stories there. So um, if you're interested, check that out. If not, well, I don't know what else you can check out. Just keep watching Drew's. <laughs> no, we love you. We love your stuff, Anthony. Thank you for watching. Take care, you plonkers. Ciao.